with the interest rates at the highest level in 23 years for over a year now, markets have been bracing for the economic impact of that strain, for the Fed to break something. My next guest says that the Fed did indeed break something, and that was another central bank. The Fed broke the Bank of Japan, and now the clock has started counting down towards a global debt crisis. Here to explain this and more and give us his outlook on the markets, gold and Bitcoin is Edward Dowd. Ed is the founding partner of Finance Technologies. He's over three decades of experience in finance, including working as a portfolio manager at BlackRock, the world's biggest asset manager. He's also the author of Cause Unknown. Ed, nice to have you back with us. Thanks for joining us again. Michelle, great to be here. Thanks for having me on again. Ed, very good to have you back with us. Before we get into where we are now with the Fed and the Bank of Japan and interest rates, I want to pick up where we left off last time. And you were on in late March of 2023. We just had three of the four largest bank failures in US history with the midst of the banking crisis. And you were expecting an emergency rate cut by July from the Fed following those banking collapses. Now, instead, we got the bank term funding program and other creative solutions, but there was no rate cut. In fact, the Fed hiked rates. There were three more 25 basis point hikes after that, with rates peaking at the five and a quarter to five and a half percent range about a year ago, and the Fed has held steady since. So let's begin with what happened there, why you weren't correct, why didn't that rate cut happen, in your opinion? Yes, yes, Michelle, we did have uh, a... Uh, a, a, a misstep in our prediction. We were wrong on the interest rate cuts. They, in fact, raised a few more times. The good news is they prevented the bank run. The Federal Reserve instituted the bank term funding program because the assets in their held to maturity account were way underwater and people were starting to get nervous. And that's why we had those bank failures. So what the Fed did is lent uh, uh, the banking system short term loans to prevent these bank runs. And they unfortunately took away the, the, that, those loans in March 11th of this year. They, they ended the program. And the, at the time that we made the call, the credit uh, markets hadn't yet deteriorated. Now we are in the part of the economic cycle where credit is deteriorating and the Fed is not going to give loans against bad credit on, their, on the bank books. So uh, that's, that, that's one thing we were wrong on. The other thing we were wrong on, we were calling for a recession in uh, Q3 and Q4 of last year. Our economic cycle indicators, which is our proprietary uh, uh, black box uh, leading indicators, showed a recession uh, coming in that time frame. Uh, and it, 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 uh, what happened in October, along with the Federal Reserve's bank term funding program, the government uh, spent, went on a spend. Seeing the deficit explode, they juiced the economy and uh, they created government jobs. At the same time, they were also manufacturing payroll numbers. It's been well documented that the payroll numbers have been revised down uh, after every month to the tune of a million and a half jobs. So, and J Jerome Powell recently even stated the payroll numbers are in question two meetings ago. He, he indicated that there's some question about that. So what we did get in our economic indicators starting in October was a bounce. And we saw our economic indicators bounce, but what's important to understand is they bounced and never got above the zero line, which is expansion. So whatever the juice that the government did and the Fed fixed, it kind of didn't get us into expansion. It kind of delayed the recession, so to speak. And our economic indicators started rolling over again in March. They've gone down every month since March. And then here we are going into the most controversial election ever and something broke. And our expectations before the Bank of Japan crisis was that we were going to see a little correction into the election, then a rally out of the election, and as the economy continued to weaken, we would see uh, the, you know, the real problems emerge. What just happened in Japan took a lot of us by alarm, and right. uh, we now think that the, the clock has been set for the global unwind of the debt, and it's going to, in conjunction with a weakening U.S. economy. So what we don't know are what the policy responses are going to be on the other side of this, which are coming and have to come. Um, as soon as as soon, one more thing. As soon as the markets blew up last week uh, or into this week, the expectations quickly went to emergency rate cuts. 
The Federal Reserve came out on Monday and indicated they're waiting for more, more data. The Fed is loath to lower interest rates, primarily because once the global financial markets catch wind of the Fed lowering interest rates and ending the rate hike pause, and we'll see a, uh, a big, big correction in risk assets, which they want to avoid. Right. So it comes a point where bad news is actually bad news, right? That when the Fed is forced to cut and the markets start to interpret that as a sign that things are really not going as well as they would appear. Uh, you mentioned that we had basically just new artificial, unprecedented ways of stimulus, new band-aids put on the economy, be it uh, the bank t funding program or other ways that sort of just kept things or changing the data or manipulating the data to, or getting the data incorrect, depending on your interpretation there, that sort of kept things afloat for a little bit longer. I, I really want to unpack the whole Fed breaking the Bank of Japan. But before we do that and get into detail there, where are we now in terms of where, what do you think the Fed is going to do? So the interest rate markets quickly predicted emergency fate, uh, Fed rate cuts. Uh, I, 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 of course, pay attention to that, but I also wanted to hear what the Fed had to say. They came out on Monday. Uh, uh, Bullsby, the Chicago Fed president, basically came out and said uh, this. Uh, one bad payroll number is just one bad payroll number. That happened on Friday. We need more data. If we see the economy weakening, we'll act, which, which was, to me, messaging that the Fed is on hold and not going to uh, do any emergency rate cuts unless unless the feedback loops are so bad from what just happened in Japan that the stock markets and the, and the financial markets start to uh, crater. Uh, absent that, the Fed is doing nothing until September. Right. And uh, we did get some positive data with uh, jobless claims looking better than expected. That sort of helped the markets rebound in the short term since that Monday sell off. Again, we're, we're, we're going to get into that uh, a little bit more. So let's get into this idea that you said uh, the Fed essentially broke the bank of Japan. Explain what you mean by that and perhaps start by giving us the background of Japan's economy and the demographics and why it had rates so, lo so low for so long. Yes, yeah, so Japan is one of the major central banks that have been coordinating uh, easy money for the last uh, 14 years since the great financial crisis. It's the, uh, the Federal Reserve, the ECB, and Bank of Japan. These are the three, and they've been passing off the baton of uh, injecting liquidity into the global system. And when I say injecting liquidity, injecting debt, because debt is money. You create a credit, you inject liquidity into the system. So they've been one of the uh, three legs of the stool and they've been keeping their interest rates uh, essentially at zero for decades because they had a demographic problem and a bubble burst in the late 90s. So uh, what happened uh, with the Federal Reserve hiking interest rates very quickly uh, to five and a half percent caused the Bank of Japan's currency to weaken because they did not raise rates uh, along with the Federal Reserve. And this interest rate differential caused the currency to implode in Japan. And Several weeks ago, it got as high as 161 U.S. dollar to J Japanese yen, which is levels we hadn't seen since the 90s. So the Bank of Japan has 260 percent debt to GDP and a huge demographic problem. Some of our demographic work shows that they just hit a new acceleration phase in, in a demographic uh, death spiral that's going to bottom sometime in, the, in, in uh, 2030, 32. So they are in trouble. And it's been one of my theories and a lot of people on Wall Street that the global debt bubble, the release valve eventually will be a currency crisis somewhere. And this just occurred in the Bank of Japan. So now they have this Hobbesian choice of saving their own economy or saving the global financial system. And this is where we are. So it's, it's, this, is, this is kind of the beginning of the unwind. There'll be policy responses. It can happen slower, fast. Right now I'm predicting it's just the clock started uh, we think it's going to manifest over the next 24 months. We do think the U.S. economy is weakening. And th this is a bad, toxic brew that suggests risk assets are something you want to be lightening up on in your portfolio over the, you know, if you haven't already done it, you should do it on rallies.